Hi friends, I'm Olga Kölsch and welcome back to my studio. Sometimes I hear from people, okay, I bought your watercolor, then what? <laughs> and I prepared three, three nice ideas to start to paint watercolor right away. Very simple, very easy and very useful. Uh, so you could get hang of watercolor of it features and try it out. So let's start. For painting a lavender landscape, I prepared a very diluted mix of ultramarine blue and sepia to make it a little bit dusty and it's very diluted. Take the biggest and softest brush you have, bathe your brush in, in this mixture, remove exceed water and with the side of the brush from edges to the center, just paint brush strokes from edges to the center just like this with nicely loaded brush you paint like this from slightly from top to bottom from edges to their center and that's how we created this nice cloudy perspective now I switch to a thinner brush and I take a mix of Viridian with sepia color. I want to have it um, like olive green. And this mixture is much more bold. And with the tip of the brush, I go underneath the cloudy area Sometimes I touch the cloud, sometimes I don't. And I create triangles that will be our mountains on the very far, on, on the horizon. And with the tip of the brush, I create some brush strokes. And I leave here and there, I leave some white space. But in principle, it's just brush strokes, which I bring to the horizon line. You could just paint a stroke like this and bring everything down to this line. It's important that you move your brush only in one direction. For example, from left to right, because sun shines from one point and that creates um, shades in the certain direction. Now I switch to my bigger brush and use the mix of ultramarine blue and alizarin crimson. It's very beautiful purple. I load my brush with this mix and I start with the tip of the brush from the horizon line with the tip of the brush and then I apply more and more and more and more pressure and I come back to the same point and I paint the first triangle. Then I wash my brush, dump it a little bit, uh, dry it a little bit with a paper towel, go along one of the edges to soften it a little bit and along the other edge, it's just clean brush, clean and dump brush right now. Like this. Now I load again my brush with this bold purple mix. And in principle, I repeat the same, the same steps. I come back to this point Apply a lot of pressure into the brush and then release the pressure. I could paint few triangles like this from the same point because that's how we usually see this lavender rose. Uh, yes, that's <laughs> lavender rose. Um, wash your brush, dry it a little bit with a paper towel and go in between the rows. Just 
soften the edges. And again, uh, let's paint the left side. We start, we start with this central point, focal point, and paint the edge of the triangle. Go back to that point. Your rows should become slightly um, thinner as you move to the horizon. Soften, uh, wash the brush, clean the brush with a paper towel and add some, um, some texture in between. My brush is almost dry and that creates these nice white gaps which I, I really like. I find it very cool and very sunshine. And the last thing to do for, for the brave people, if you are not that brave, you could just stop here. Load your brush with something yellow, cadmium yellow, for example. And um, do something like this. And that creates a little bit of nice check texture. Now let's paint a valentine heart, a floral heart, which you could use as a valentine if you write something inside or just something lovely to train your hand. Let's start. For a floral heart, I took a square piece of paper and I mapped out the heart shape. I'm starting um, to paint with a branch. Just I go from the bottom of the heart, <laughs> from, from the bottom of my heart, I start to paint the small little branch. And now I switch to the mix of Viridian and Sepia. I bathe my brush and I start to paint green leaves. How I paint leaves? I put my brush on its tip to the branch. I paint a small stroke. Then I apply some pressure to the branch, wiggle it a little bit and release the pressure. And let's do it again. Tip of the brush, small stroke, some pressure and release the pressure. Let's repeat. We have to keep in mind that our branch is curving to the left. So small stroke, a little bit more pressure, release the pressure. And it's okay when your leaves are different, um, then they have some, some strokes around. It makes it all much more interesting and diverse. About this, and now let's paint some, a cluster of flowers. For flowers, I, uh, I took alizarin crimson, relatively diluted. I imagine where will be the center of a flower, for example, here. And I start to paint with the tip of the brush from the center outside. Just brush strokes. Just brush strokes in different directions. One flower. Uh, if it more help for you, you could set a point for the flower center, for example, and start to paint from this point. One petal, another petal. You apply a little bit more pressure, not to the whole brush, just to the very, very tip. Like this. And... A little bit more, one stroke, two strokes, and in different directions. It's very tempting to move the paper, which is also okay, no problem. But I encourage you try to move your wrist, to train your wrist to paint in different directions. One, two, I like when um, flowers they have some intersection in between that um, make that uh, make the watercolor flow and bleeds very nicely, very beautifully. Let's paint one more. 
And now we are going back to our branch. To our branch. And now it's very helpful that I mapped out the hut shape so I would not go uh, into some weird direction. Right now I want to make our colors bleed so I bring my brush it's steep to the flower point and I start to paint leaf from here and that's how I drag out a little bit of um, uh, red color and that's really what watercolor painting is about. It's about nice mix of colors and playing around with the mix of colors. I want to get a little bit more bold mix of green. Tip of your brush, a little bit more pressure, wiggle, 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 release. Um, you always could add a little bit more of branch area. Also try to paint it in not in one single line, but um, add some variety to it. A little stroke, wiggle, 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 wiggle. Just like this. You could also try to paint from the top of the flower and bring it back to the um, to the branch. That's also quite an option. And let's paint the final leaf of this side. Wiggle, wiggle, and this is it. Try not to overthink, not to overdo it. What I would like to add for this area is just small, tiny middles for the flowers. I take sepia, very bold, right from the palette, and with the tip of the brush, I just add one tiny little point. This one is a bit too wet. I'm pretty sure it will um, go into the wrong direction. So I get my paper towel, dry a little bit this area, and add sepia into this area. See, that's the trick. Okay, now let's paint the second half. Um, to make it more interesting, let's do some curves. Uh, and in principle, we paint in the same greenery. Uh, from this side, it's a bit more handy to paint from the top of the leaf and bring it back to the branch. Also nice for practicing of painting leaves. If uh, you want more practice, I have uh, another video which is all about painting greenery. So you could just check it out. From tip of the brush, wiggle, 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 bring it back to the branch. And I think right here, a big, nice pink flower would be lovely. Uh, here was a group of small, tiny flowers and right here, I'm mapping out with sepia color, the middle, just few tiny little dots and switch to the bigger brush. And from the center, in principle, it's like painting leaves, but with pink color, I drag out. I come back to, this, uh, to the center of the flower, tip of the brush, belly of the brush and release the pressure. I could a little bit uh, shape it, help it with the brush while the paper is still wet. I could add some corrections to the shape. A fifth flower from... I will turn it a little bit so you could see better. Tip of the brush belly of the brush, some wiggle, 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 release the pressure. And two bottom petals. Um, tip of the brush, belly of the brush, it's more like a side of the brush. And release. 
and the same to the other direction. Now we have a nice big flower which uh, balance the composition. Now I would like to extend the branch and I would like, while this petal is still wet, I think a nice bleed with green leaves will look really nice. So I bring the tip of the brush to this petal, small stroke and then wiggle, 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 leaf, a leaf and another leaf. And one more. Actually, it's uh, I'm trying to paint slow, but it's much easier to get the right shape when you paint quicker. Just try it out. It's like uh, riding a bicycle. When you do it slow, you, you can't keep the balance. Once you do it quick, it's much more artistic. It's much more easy. So try not to overthink it and just paint round. In principle, this is it. What I love uh, to do here and there, I love to add some outlines. It's just leaves, leaves, outlines. You paint some ovals or leaf shapes without anything. And see how it brings the air to their composition and make it very, very, very specific. Just a few spots where you feel it could work pretty well. Again, not, not overthink it. It should be easy, light, fresh. This is it. Now we are going to paint a butterfly, very loose, very simple, and I hope you really enjoy the process. Let's start. For our butterfly, we need two mixes. One is very, very super diluted blue, ultramarine blue, and the other one is creamy, bold consistence of blue with a hint of alizarin crimson. And that will be very fun painting. Let's find the middle of our butterfly. Map it a little bit just for your help with our watery mix. Bathe the brush in the water and just with the tip of the brush create butterfly wings. You could leave some free space around, you could fill it everything with the mix, paint with your, uh, paint with water. It's very freehand, no need to overthink it. Just tr try to add really a lot of water around and some nice brush strokes. Could be b bigger one, could be smaller one. I think it's nice to add some variety just like this how your hand goes that's the only thing is important and now i switch to another brush and i got into my bold mixture and with the tip of the brush of with the other brush it's relatively dry i go along the edges and you see what's happening our bold mix begins to uh, bleed with our watery mix and create with this really beautiful watercolor paths, watercolor ornaments. Really beautiful. I think that's the moment I like really much in watercolor when it just goes by itself. Uh, the trick is that you go with this bold mix along the edges, just along the edges. I do not try to go inside. Of course, you could try. You could also move a little bit your page. Um, so, uh, watercolor distributes a little bit more. And with the tip of the brush, with the tip of the bold brush, you could correct some maybe some moments, some pieces. 
Don't overthink it. It's very freehand painting. And now comes the tricky part, but I'm pretty sure we will manage. And with this, I uh, take my watery, watery watercolor. I leave some wide gap between the wings area, small wide gap, and I try to create relatively symmetrical second wing, second half of our butterfly. If that's not super symmetrical, it's not the end of the world and it's completely fine. Maybe just try to um, keep the proportions. That would be pretty enough. And if that feels too stressful for you to paint like this, it's completely, completely fine to first paint some outlines with pencil and then fill them with the color, with watercolor or with water. <laughs> oh, first with water and then with color. So I think that's <laughs> symmetrical enough. And I switch again my brushes uh, and I get this bold mix of ultramarine blue and just a drop of alizarin crimson. It could be also nice to try out uh, to mix different hues. For example, take watery alizarin crimson, pink one, and make these outlines edges with ultramarine blue or mix of alizarin crimson and ultramarine blue. That will be more contrast uh, and much more um, variety in how watercolor plays. So it's really, I love this technique. It's uh, relaxing, simple, and it gives you a lot of uh, freedom. And you could, it's nice, would be great practice for mixing colors. And you see which colors work one with the other, which don't. Add some, uh, with the tip of the brush, add some small tiny details. You know, these small tiny little drops and spots, they, they're very small, but they make a difference. Let's paint the body. For the body, I will I will take burnt sienna, burnt sienna. Um, anything in brown sepia also will work. I make it very bold, and first I paint the head of our butterfly, small head, and then with zigzag moves, like zigzag, zigzag, zigzag. Sometimes I touch uh, the wings, sometimes I don't. I paint the body. Actually, right now I see that you could just take a clean brush and go with this zigzag between two wings and just use this blue color to create the body. But what we are doing is also um, it brings some extra color in the picture, <clears throat> which is nice. Let's paint Antines. Um, with the tip of the brush, it's about 30 degrees to the paper. You could first <laughs> train a little bit your hand and paint a curvy line with some dot on the end. Um, at the end. And um, you see, I'm not aiming to paint one whole line in one go. It's completely fine to paint some gaps. Mm, even more, I would tell you, if you add some gaps and some tiny little dots, it will make our butterfly look, uh, look more fairy tale. Um, Let's remove a little bit of water. To, for, to remove in water, I clean my brush, dry my brush, and with the 30 degree angle, I 
remove this big puddle. This was a little bit not what we planned. And I, I have a nice video about controlling water. I know that's uh, the tricky part in watercolor. So just check it out. Let's add a few final details. Just with bold mix of um, ultramarine blue, I add some dots on this outside area of the wings. It's usually where in real butterflies they have uh, some nice ornaments and I just emulate in this very freehand. Mm, don't overthink it. It's very freehand and relaxing painting. In, and of course you could stop here. Um, that's already a nice uh, painting. Or if you like to go a little bit further, you could paint a branch around. A burnt sienna or um, better the same color as the body to make it more consistent. And mix of tallow green and sepia, which we use for lavender field. Paint some leaves in a way which we painted in the video with um, heart, the floral heart. Just few leaves around and our painting suddenly becomes more complex and have a nice composition. One more. Now we are done. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed the process. I'm very curious to know which of the free tutorials you found most easy, most inspiring or most complex. I'm looking forward for your feedback. Subscribe my channel and see you next time. Bye bye.